if you could share your screen while I introduce you. Uh, so uh, many of you will know Anand from his very successful uh, OR uh, podcast, Subject 2, uh, in which I think he even had Claudio as a guest. Um, and um, and so uh, Anand, besides the podcast, he's a, an active academic uh, associate professor uh, at uh, Universidad Federal de Paraíba, um, and he obtained his uh, PhD in computing in 2012 from uh, Univers Universidad Federal uh, uh, Fluminense in Brazil. Um, his uh, doctoral thesis received the Honorable Mention uh, Award from Brazilian Ministry of Education uh, and selected uh, among the top six uh, theses by the Brazilian uh, Computing Society. And his research is mainly in heuristic, uh, exact, and hybrid algorithm for a combinatorial uh, optimization of which he's uh, obtained multiple um, awards for highly cited uh, papers. And uh, today he's gonna tell us about something uh, relevant, I guess, to most of us, uh, which is the conference scheduling problem. So Anand, please take it away. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. I'm very honored to take part of this uh, very nice series of uh, seminars. Uh, so this is a, a joint work. I'm sorry, I apologize if my connection is not so good. Uh, I, I, I borrowed my wife's phone now, so I hope it, it you know, the wife always has a better uh, device and internet, so I hope it, it's better now. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, this is a joint work with my former master's student, Rubens Correa, my colleague, Talbot Williams, and my, my other colleague, Puka Pena, who is from the Universidade Federal de Ouro Preto. So, uh, so this is the, the, the structure of the presentation. I'll start with the introduction, then I'll describe the problem. Uh, I'll go and explain the, the solution methods followed by the results and concluding remarks. Uh, so if you want to know more about this work, you can check these two papers that have been recently, pu recently published in EHR and in JORS. Uh, so uh, you all probably should have uh, participated in, in conferences uh, multiple times. Um, conferences, you know, they, there are just plenty of them happening every year and they can be referred to conferences, workshops, symposiums, and so on. There's a lot going on in a conference, but we are particularly interested in technical sessions. So uh, in our case, we want to schedule them in an effective way. So in this, this uh, uh, photo here, I was actually uh, presenting the work that scheduled the Brazilian OR conference. And in this, uh, this session was scheduled by our algorithm. So uh, now I'm talking about that work. So I'm adding another layer of inception, if you will. <laughs> so usually, you know, when you have a, a technical session, might vary between uh, 50 to 30 minutes and might have, you know, three, four, five, six presentations per session. In other words, you want to determine in our case, what time and which room the participants will present their work. So this is a very small example. This is in Portuguese because it's, it's, it's related to the Brazilian OR conference. So this problem is often solved manually, and this is Puka, and he was actually doing it manually uh, over the years uh, for the Brazilian OR conference. And, and I approached him and I suggested him, let's, let's see if we can do it better. Uh, but then when uh, inspecting the literature, we checked that there's no consensus on solving the problem. One might use the presentive perspective, the other one will go with the participant perspective and so on. Yet at the same time, we are fully aware that it's very, very hard to come up with a definitive way of modeling this problem because of the particularities of each conference. Yet we, uh, we try to come up with a basic that is sufficiently realistic uh, version of the problem because then researchers might be interested in trying to, to, to produce better methods if you have like a standard way of, of seeing this problem. And at the same time, uh, uh, organizers will be more, perhaps more interested in using optimization tools in practice to schedule their conferences. In our case, we're formulating the problem, taking into account different perspectives simultaneously, uh, in, in this case, organizers, participants, and presenters. And the core idea of our, uh, our all methods is to assign papers that are strongly related to uh, a same session, okay? So we propose three exact approaches. The first is a simple compact uh, ILP formulation, integer linear programming formulation. Then uh, uh, a second formulation with exponential number of variables, which is implemented under a Russian cut scheme. Then uh, a third formulation with exponential number of variables and constraints. Uh, in this case, we use the branch current price algorithm and a math heuristic 
algorithm that combines uh, iterated local search, simulated annealing, and two mathematical formulations. Uh, we uh, perform computational experiments on real-life instances and also on artificial life instances, artificial uh, based instances that were derived from these conferences. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, describing the problem, these are the sets. So P stands for papers, talks, presentations, abstracts, as you wish. Uh, and then C, S sessions, D, J's, H, non-overlapping time slots. For example, nine to 10 <clears throat> could be a time slot. Then T, topics. Topics can be uh, simulation, uh, combinatorial optimization, uh, and hearing theory as you will, as you like. Uh, uh, then authors, and then we have a, a bunch of subsets here. Then DS and HS, they, they uh, represent the day and the time slot of a session respectively, okay? Uh, so uh, for the data, we have the BIJs, the benefit of assigning a pair of papers uh, to the same session. And the, the more related they are, the, the, the higher the benefits. Also, we take it, that's very important. We, have, uh, we can also assign small or even large negative values if you don't want papers to be uh, together in a session for some reason. Then you have bounds on the number of papers for each session, that is uh, input data. And then we have also the maximum number of papers of a given topic that can be assigned to a time slot and the maximum number of papers of a given topic that can be assigned the same day. So we don't kind of uh, uh, concentrate a lot of papers of the same topic uh, at the same time and in the same day, okay? So the objective is simply to maximize the total benefit. And the first two constraints are, are the clustering constraints uh, each paper must be assigned to exactly one session and <clears throat> a non-empty session should re respect the bounds that is the minimal number and the maximum number of papers allowed to be in that session. These uh, three other constraints we refer uh, them as side constraints. They're actually the conference scheduling constraints more specific. Uh, so we'll be refer I'll be referring to that as side constraints from now on. And uh, <clears throat> once a, a feasible solution uh, uh, is found, the order of the papers that are uh, uh, assigned you know, to a session are actually arbitrarily determined. You don't care about this in the first stage. And the topics, uh, in the topic of the session, we take into account the mode uh, uh, of the, the works. You can even have uh, two uh, topics if, you, if the, the, the papers are not that well uh, connected or related, OK? So uh, the problem is NP-hard. It can be reduced uh, from the click partitioning problem. Uh, there's one possible uh, limitation of our strategy is that exactly uh, that point that we don't uh, schedule the order. Once we assign the papers to a session, we don't care about the, the order. But then if a participant is interested in, in attending a, a presentation by Claudio and by Alex, and they're happening at the same time, that could be avoided if we <clears throat> uh, approach this. This can actually be a tackle that I can explain later on how, but in the first place, we in, in the first moment, we didn't do it, okay? Uh, so uh, the clustering component of our clustering uh, scheduling problem is super related to this maximally diverse grouping problem. And the only difference is that uh, the MDGP uh, does not allow empty clusters. And in our case, we, we do allow that. So uh, the, going on to the first mathematical formulation, uh, this is a very straightforward. It's a compact formulation. This first variable has three indices indicating if a pair of papers are assigned to the same session. Then the remaining variables indicate whether a paper is assigned in a session, uh, if a session has been used, and if at least one author, uh, uh, one, of it, one paper from a particular author has been assigned to a session. Uh, so the objective function and the first five constraints are literally those that I have just described now. Okay, so it's a mathematical description of the constraints using the variables uh, and that I have just introduced, okay? So very straightforward, no secret here. It's just basically taking uh, uh, the variables and rewriting explicitly those uh, constraints, the clustering constraints and side constraints. The, this, is, these are, this is the clustering, this is the side constraints. This, uh, this uh, uh, last set of constraints just connect the variables. Uh, so we have a formulation that makes sense, okay? Uh, and then we, we have this valid inequality that we've inherited from a previous of work of ours for the P clustering editing problem. We published this paper in discrete applied mathematics. So we can actually impose bounds on the number of times that the X variable can appear in a solution. Uh, so now going into formulation F2, this is actually a clustering formulation. Okay, so uh, we have now uh, additional sets. This, this set K is for types of clusters. In this case, we have, we might have two types of sessions. One session allows only three papers or three presentations 
the other session may allow four or five presentations. That's what actually happens sometimes at the Brazilian or conference. And then you have the bounds indicating the maximum and minimum uh, number of uh, uh, times that that cluster can appear. Now we have a two a variable with two indices indicating whether a paper, a pair of papers are in the same cluster, but this one with three indices uh, considers uh, <clears throat> indicate that the pair of papers are together in the same cluster led by uh, paper I. So the, the idea of a leader of a cluster in our case is that is the paper or presentation with the smallest index assigned to that session or cluster is considered to be the leader of a cluster. And then that was also taken from this work by Campelo. Campelo is a Brazilian guy, very talented guy, by the way. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, note that we are uh, dealing now with this type of session. So the K uh, index, if you have just one type of session, this, can, this index can be dropped. So in this case, as you can see, we'll, we'll have less symmetry issues and things like that. Okay, because uh, as opposed to the previous formulation, we don't have an index on an explicit session or cluster. We have on the type of cluster. Okay, so objective function again, maximize total benefit. These are uh, so-called triangle inequalities, uh, fairly known in the cluster editing literature and, and other cluster uh, uh, problems. So you want to avoid these situations here. Every time this thing might happen, we close it. So we, okay, we, we, we uh, enforce the click to happen, okay? Uh, so then clustering constraints uh, only in this, in this formulation, each paper should be assigned to a cluster. There should be at, at most uh, S cluster uh, types, uh, uh, S, S clusters of type K, and then a minimum and maximum number of papers in the cluster. Uh, then this is a logical constraint, and this is so the bounds again that we can also introduce for this formulation, this relationship uh, between the variables. And as you can see, <clears throat> this formulation addressed specifically the first two uh, constraints, the clustering constraints. We did not explicitly consider the side constraints, the, one, the, the last three that I uh, explained earlier. So what we do is, and whenever a Cuban solution is found by, by the solver, we have to check whether the solution is feasible or not, according to the side constraints. And if the solution is not feasible, we have this no good cut here. So there is a, an exponential size uh, there, the constraint, the number of constraints are exponential. Um, so we don't have that, of course, uh, in advance. We add them in a lazy fashion and I'll explain how do we do it. Uh, so moving on to the separation problem now, uh, uh, that is uh, associated with our version cut algorithm. So imagine that you have these papers uh, here and each paper has, in this case, three topics. Each color uh, denotes a topic and then you do the clustering, okay? You, we, we solve it and then we found this clustering of uh, an incumbent solution. And then <clears throat> we check, we have to check and see whether we can somewhat assign these uh, uh, clusters to the sessions respecting the side constraints. And this can be modeled as a, a integer programming formulation. So that's what we do. So we receive a collection of clusters as input, you know, and from that, we implement a formulation just to see whether the side constraints can be uh, uh, met. And it doesn't matter how. That's why we don't have an objective function. We only care about the feasibility. So we have this C variable denoting if, it's, if uh, uh, if, uh, I'm sorry, uh, if this uh, binary variable is assigned to, uh, if the cluster is assigned to the session, okay? So then we can write this uh, uh, formulation. And again, this, these are the side constraints, as you can see. Um, the problem is uh, NP complete, this uh, to, to determine whether it's feasible or not. But fortunately in practice, it can be easily solved. Even CBC or open source, source, open source solvers can perform really, really well. So we can call this uh, multiple, multiple times, even in a heuristic, we do that. So fortunately, even though it's NP complete, is still uh, uh, worth being used. Uh, so then you can actually uh, uh, generalize this separation problem if you want to address that point that I mentioned earlier of, you know, of trying to avoid conflicts of papers that the particular participant want to see. So uh, then you can introduce an objective function in a form, you know, it can be a secondary objective uh, in the problem. So you have a hierarchical uh, setting here. So this is just a hint on how can you address that point that we did not uh, consider explicitly in this work. So going on to formulation F3, uh, now we have uh, uh, clusters as variables, okay? And then we have additional notation to write the formulation and the, a lambda variable basically 
indicates whether a cluster has been using the solution of type K has been using the solution. Uh, <clears throat> so objective function is always maximize total benefit. This is a classical site partitioning constraint that each paper should be assigned to exactly one cluster. Uh, these are how many clusters of each type that we can have. These are the, this is the, uh, the lazy cuts. Okay, that um, of course we can, we will add them of course in a lazy fashion, right? And this brings us to the branch cut and price algorithm. Uh, in this case here, we have a pricing so problem for each type of cluster or each type of session. So by using the, the, the information of the dual variables, we can write uh, the reduced cost function. Um, <clears throat> and we can, all, we can reformulate this in a more compact way. And by doing that, we can actually define the problem, the price and so problem formally. As you can see, we took the duals, you know, this is textbook. So uh, the problem can be defined over a graph with arbitrary weights on vertices and edges. And the idea is to find the maximum click uh, over this graph. And again, this is a NPR problem. Uh, and in this case, it's not very easy to use, you know, dynamic programming, things like that. We have to, uh, uh, a resort to, to formulations, but in some cases, when the session has, for example, a very limited number of papers allowed, for example, three or even four, then we do enumeration. So we so as to avoid the uh, the calling the solver. And but after a while, I mean, after five, I mean, from five papers in a session onwards, it's kind of complicated actually to to enumerate. So we have to use integer programming. This is the natural way of modeling the problem by literally taking the reduced fox cost function that I just uh, presented. Uh, but in, unfortunately, this nonlinear formulation to solve the pricing sub problem did not perform well. So we tried two ways of linear, linearizing uh, the, the, this uh, <clears throat> problem. And then the second one turned out to be more effective. That is inspiring in, on the idea that was used for the quadratic knapsack problem. Right. Uh, we also do heuristic pricing. That's very critical. So we don't, you know, call the, the, the solver every time. So it's a very simple heuristic. It's a multi-start heuristic that we call it from scratch every time. Um, and then uh, we have a constructive procedure, a very simple gritty procedure. And local search use V and D with standard uh, neighborhood structures using uh, best improvement strategy, and this is important, auxiliary data structures, so you can do move evaluation in, in a, an effective way, right? So, you know, constant move evaluation, if you're familiar with, you know, heuristics and local search, you know that this is a, a, a point that one should take really care so uh, to, to, to prevent the algorithm to, be, to run really slow, right? So, uh, naturally, we use a two-stage column generation, it refers to pricing, then we do exact pricing. We borrowed some, some ideas from the literature, you know, dual stabilization, uh, two-phase <clears throat> two strong branching. And for the branching rule, we branch over pair papers. And note that the lazy cuts and the branching constraints do not alter, do not modify the structure of the pricing sub problem. So then we can call this as, you know, as a robust branch cut and price algorithm. Now moving on to the math heuristic. This is, as I said, we combine ideas of uh, ILS, simulated annealing, and some, and a couple of mathematical formulations. So, uh, as in the heuristic uh, we've implemented for the pricing sub problem, we also have a multi-start algorithm that starts from scratch every time. We generate an initial solution, and then we do local search. And then, when we do local search, you know, the, the neighborhood search, we do not consider the site constraints. And every time we found the local optima, we check using the model whether uh, the solution is feasible with respect to the complete problem. Uh, <clears throat> there's a risk that the heuristic might not uh, uh, return a feasible solution, but that never happened. But you know, uh, we cannot ensure that. And we, alter, we also save uh, the, the clusters, the promising clusters in this pool, okay? So uh, we use the simulating annealing criterion uh, to decide from which solution will continue the search. And uh, once the algorithm ends, you know, the main loop of, you know, doing uh, local search perturbations, and once it's done, it goes to the restart. And once all, once all restarts are done, we call this last stage, which is a start partitioning uh, formulation, very inspired on, on the third formulation that I have just explained, which is also implemented using a branch and cut scheme. Every time an incubated solution is found using the clusters that we have uh, obtained during the search, 
we run, a, 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 we call that a feasibility checking model to see whether it's feasible or not. So the constructive procedure is basically, you know, uh, very straightforward, combining randomness and greediness, local search again, VND, same settings as the heuristic pricing. Of course, the problem is different, but the, the spirit of the idea is similar. Very simple perturbation schemes, you know, multi, uh, multiple relocate moves or multiple swap moves. And as I said, the asset partitioning formulation essentially implements uh, the, uh, a very, very similar formulation as F3. Okay, so now going to the computational uh, uh, results. This is the we use C++, this is the computer we have run the experiments. Uh, we use the BAP code uh, framework from the guys from Bordeaux, from Francois Van der Beek and, and other guys. Uh, we, for every exact method, we, we use the best initial bound. Initial, we use an initial primal bound that was, that we obtained using the math heuristic so as to try to, to improve the uh, uh, efficiency of the, the exact uh, methods. We have, we have start, we, we put 12 hours for the first and second formulations and five hours for the Michigan and price. And these uh, values were obtained after extensive preliminary experiments for the, for the math heuristic. These are the characteristics of the instances. As you can see, Lars has uh, uh, the least number of papers and the Brazilian OR conference has a fairly and a considerable amount of papers. It, the Brazilian, Brazilian OR conference, conference is probably the largest national OR conference um, in Latin America. Uh, and in, in and it probably the second or third, I don't know how you have to check the Canadian OR conference. Of course, the informs is the largest, but uh, so we have a lot of people, our community is fairly large. Um, and then these are the number of authors, number of sessions, number of dates, and number of topics. And this is interesting to observe that Lars have a lot of topics. So you can ass assign a lot of topics to a paper and, and whereas EBL, uh, which is the logic conference, Brazilian biologic conference have a, a, a limit, has a limited number of topics. Okay, this is the average number of topics, average number of times a particular topic appears and the average number of authors and so on. So this is the, the how the, the, the capacity of the sessions are uh, considered in each conference. So we generated artificial instances proportionally to the original one so for Lars, we went up to 172 papers, okay? Trying to maintain, as you can see here, more or less uh, uh, the, the proportion of the original instance. And we did the same for EBL, exactly the same. So now reporting the results for Lars uh, is, as you can see, as you remember, Lars has a lot of topics. So apparently this is, that this makes the life easier for the method. So as you can see, uh, first, the first two sets of instances, and well, of course, we propose for each group five instances. So this is not an individual instance. So here, each line uh, accounts for uh, an average value of five instances. So as you can see, the first two sets of instances, it, uh, it has been easily solved with F1, but then it, it could not solve the optimality. But the gaps of F2 were more promising and very competitive. Uh, so, okay, this seems nice. But then we go to EBL when you have limited number of topics and it's more uh, challenging to, you know, define the value of the benefits. Papers are, you know, the similarity, it's not very easy to, to define the similarity of the papers. Uh, it's, I mean, there are a lot of uh, redundancies. I mean, there's a lot of symmetries. So uh, the gaps are just very bad, for, at least for F1. F2 is respectful, I would say, but then you can see here they're using the branch and cut. It's already much better than using, using the compact formulation, okay? Uh, so, but the branch cut and price performed really well. As you can see, the average gaps were really, really competitive uh, for Lars and also for EBL. So the branch cut and price algorithm really, uh, we had really an edge. So it was really worth implementing all the paraphernalia of these advanced exact algorithms. <clears throat> As for Lars and EBL, the real life instances, the BCP could solve them to optimality and the, the, the F1 and F2, they struggle. F1 really, really struggle. F2 could not do much. And the Bresh and Price uh, ultimately solve both real life instances. Uh, now we experimented with different uh, uh, scenarios. The first one is the default, the standard one. Then we, we try to see what would happen if we check conflict of presenters, then co-authors, right? For example, if uh, Claudio has you know, 10 papers in a conference, it, that will, might be tricky. So, but he will be presenting only one and then the other nine will be presented by somebody else. Then the problem becomes less uh, challenging, I would say. So as you can see for Lars, when we did that as in, uh, uh, the, the, in the scenario two, we could solve more, op more instances to optimality. That did not happen to EBL because in EBL, what was really hard is we had a very limited amount of topics. So uh, for scenario three, we, uh, we assume that we have only one topic per paper because this happens in, in a lot of conferences. 
And the fourth scenario, we de decrease the number of topics of LARS, which was, which was large, and we increase the number of topics of EBL. As you can see, uh, we solve less instances with LARS and we could solve more instances with EBL. So the number of topics, the more topics you have in a conference, the better for the performance of the method, okay? And when you have just one topic per paper, also this affects, might potentially affect negatively affect the performance of the algorithm. So as you can see, uh, uh, <clears throat> sometimes you have you can some, uh, talk to, your, to the organizers to try to take the best of the algorithm to, to, to be put on in practice. So this is the math heuristic. Math heuristic performed really, really well in terms of uh, best gaps and average gaps, you know, the, uh, in a very competitive time, both for Lars, EBL. This year we took, we, we, we took the, the best uh, available algorithms for the MGDP. Fortunately, the codes were available for, for both of them. And we solved just the clustering part disregarding the site constraints to check whether our clustering algorithm was competitive. And it turned out to be competitive and it outperformed the, 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 the best algorithms for the MGDP. That was a, a sort of a surprise. Uh, as you can see, our algorithms, the gaps and the number of best solutions uh, were better. And then in a real life solutions, it was almost, I mean, it was really competitive except for this one where our average was slightly worse than this, but in overall, it performed really well in real life instances. So for the real life instances of the Brazilian Law Conference, as you can see, uh, using optimization is much more uh, promising than of course using a manual procedure. So we have much better solutions. And here, as you can see, we have more papers with two topics in common assigned to the same session, even three papers uh, in common assigned to the same session where when compared to the manual solution, were targeted more in one topic. So if they found, usually if they found mm, this topic is okay. So we, this, of course, it was a greedy way of uh, trying to solve the problem manually, okay? Um, so uh, <clears throat> these are results found for the uh, real life instances that we do, we solve it on, pra on practice. I mean, we, we provided a solution. There was no manual solution. Uh, this is the interesting thing. The, the branch cutter price found the optimal solution for this very large instance of 283 uh, presentations, which is a, a, a surprise, and the heuristics perform well. Even with CBC, results were fairly okay, but of course with CPLEX, much better. The gap here doesn't mean that the heuristic is bad because you're comparing to a dual bound. And of course, you cannot ensure whether that dual bound is strong enough, but then we're pretty much confident that the heuristic uh, pr produced really high quality results. So now moving on to the concluding remarks, we propose uh, that we believe in an innovative way of addressing uh, a conference scheduling problem using a clustering based approach. Uh, we think that the scheme is somewhat uh, simple and flexible and can be used in, in many conferences, conferences uh, uh, worldwide. We propose three exact methods uh, and one uh, heuristic method. Uh, the, the, the BCP was the, clearly the winner and the math heuristic produced very good solutions in a, an acceptable computing time. And this may enable one to use that tool in practice, especially the math heuristic for larger instances, because you can, you know, every time there's this less many changes and you want to experiment with this and that. So uh, the heuristic may turn out to be a very good tool to be used in practice. And future, as future work, uh, we might experiment with different side constraints, try to use different similarity measures. We use a very naive uh, way of computing the similarities just based on the topic. You can use keywords, you can use NLP, you can use things that are more efficient in that regard. Uh, we can also include the interest of the participant, those that are not exactly presenting or not only presenting. Uh, so that can be also in, in embedded as a form as a secondary objective, as I said, or, or in a different way. And then extensions of this problem, we have actually solved this in our university. We have the conference scheduling, but then we have examiners that will evaluate the works of the students. And I was an examiner, by the way, one of them. So uh, this has been actually a tool that has been put in practice as well here uh, in our university. So using exactly the same framework and uh, we are actually very pleased with the result. So ultimately we think that, okay, this might not model all conference scheduling problems, we understand that, but could be a potential direction try, so to try to have a generic or even a, a standard way of first thinking about the problem um, instead of just at random try to come up with a way uh, you know that is not really consistent with what has been done before. So thank you very much uh, uh, for your time and I'll be happy to answer your questions. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very uh, rich top topic, very relatable. Um, <clears throat> so actually I, I do have a question. I was wondering um, about the uh, about the extension to uh, instead of uh, scheduling 
uh, assigning papers to reviewers for large conferences. So I know, for example, in machine learning, uh, there's neural information processing system, NeurIPS, which is kind of the biggest one. They get, you know, 9,000 submissions. There's thousands of reviewers. There's a huge conflict. You have to declare conflicts of interest based on domain of institution and advisors and so on. Um, and then papers are uh, also, you, you as an author, you need to tag the primary area and optional secondary areas. Uh, and each reviewer will have, you know, at most six uh, papers to review, and each paper gets uh, ideally four reviewers, something like that. So you have some of the same structures, right? Uh, and I know years ago when I was at the conference, the conference chair was proud that we were using, they were using some kind of mathematical optimization um, at the time, but I, I wasn't sure if they were uh, they said at the time something uh, was open sourced uh, or something, but it seems that this is also another thing. I mean, there are many fields where there's at least in OR, we don't have one huge conference, uh, you know, besides abstract based submissions like what you have here. But in computer science, in every field, there's at least two or three huge conferences that get many thousands of submissions. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe this extends, I mean, some of the ideas, at least from modeling slash algorithmic you know like let's use bcp because this is seems efficient and the kind of heuristics you have if you have any yeah. thoughts about that yeah this is a reviewer assignment problem uh so i mean we solved this at our own university again years ago with we could use a simple mathematical formulation to assign uh projects in that case to mm -hmm. reviewers respecting the constraint that you just mentioned we have mm -hmm. to care about uh how comfortable the review reviewer mm -hmm. is to judge that project and work yes so you want to maybe maximize their satisfaction or minimize mm -hmm. their dissatisfaction mm -hmm. and then we have the constraints that with like a fairness in, if you mm -hmm. if you want to go like that that you don't want to give a lot of papers or projects yes. to a particular uh, person reviewer so mm -hmm. this is also i mean this is an easier problem because you don't have the scheduling component yes uh, right and uh mm -hmm. i think that i may be wrong but in a lot of situations, but I know I'm working actually the problem with Leandro Coelho. Uh, mm -hmm. In some, there is some sort of a uh, you guys in 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 Quebec apparently. Uh, yeah, you're in Toronto, I know, but uh, the guys in, in Quebec, Claudio, and you you submit projects. I have been invited to evaluate some of them. So the, the process is more is more mm -hmm. uh, complicated because you have also schedule there. It's not mm -hmm. only doing the reviewer assignment. So if you have just a reviewer assignment problem, I believe that uh, uh, if it's we uh, we have not experimented with like thousands of, of papers, right? But with at least uh, hundreds of papers, hundreds. I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident that you can use a, a, a simple mathematical formulation. But then if you go, if you're going to increase the instance, then you have to see what happens. But mm -hmm. this is, of course, is related to, to all of these uh, 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 optimization problems arising in academia, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in, in, the, uh, in this type of, in, in this type of, this class of problems. So you have like classroom assignment problem, timetable, mm -hmm. you know, so this is more or less related. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I don't think it's might we might not need a very complex tool, right. but uh, we have to experiment, and I think it's a great idea to try to do that in the in those conferences that you mentioned, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Great, thank you very much. Um, okay, so uh, if there are, uh, uh, is there any further uh, question? Otherwise, I know many people want to go watch the Netherlands Argentina game. So I, you know, I don't want to be holding anybody. But if there's a question, uh, including Anna, who I think maybe doesn't want an extra question. Uh, no, I can't. I know. I, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm very upset because you all unexpectedly yes. left the World Cup. So I don't care about the game. I mean, I will watch, but okay. it's not I'm very much into the. Yeah, I'm. I'm super Remaining upset. Teams. I tried to pretend I was everything is all right, but deep inside, <laughs> I my my heart is broken. So what to do? <laughs> yeah. What can you do? Okay, yeah. any other questions? All right, then if there aren't any, I'll thank you, uh, Anand uh, and Claudio again for the, for the wonderful talks and everybody uh, for attending.